I have former Sri Lankan MP Mr. Suresh Premachandran with me. Thank you for joining. My first question to you is, what is the status of uh, the Tamils living in Sri Lanka, especially after this uh, economic crisis? Economic crisis is concerned. The whole Sri Lanka is facing the same problem. Actually, even up, uh, after you know the India government of India given four billion dollars of loan to Sri Lanka and various helps to Sri Lanka. But Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka doesn't have the political stability in that country. Because of that, there is no one is willing to invest in Sri Lanka. If there is no investment, then it will be very difficult for the Sri Lankan government to survive. Not only that, even actually they have to pay back uh, so much of their loans. They have to pay back more than 57 billion to various countries, they, they, you know, they, China, India, France, Japan, various countries. But the Sri Lankan government, if they, if they, if they do uh, economically, if they invite the international investment only, their export will grow, the international money will flow into Sri Lanka. Those, those things are not happening in Sri Lanka. Only they are trying to get more and more loans. They are getting loans from IMF, they are getting loans from various other countries. They couldn't be pay back. Even to Bangladesh, they have to pay back the loan. Now they have given a small amount of loan, they have paid back. But actually, if they started to pay back the loan, then it will be difficult for Sri Lanka even to import the goods to Sri Lanka. Now actually, they are restructuring the loan. Restructuring not only the international loan, even the local loan. If they are restructuring the loan, in that time, they may be, you know, they can go at least another two, three years, it will be okay. But after that, they won't pay back the loan. If they, won't, if they started to pay back, then again, they will be facing the same old problem. This is what the economists are saying. So the whole Sri Lanka, not only the Tamils, the whole Sri Lankans are uh, economically, of course, we are still in a r r risk, uh, risky place. So that's what is happening. Uh, let's talk about the demand for devolution of uh, uh, of powers. So, what are the expectations in this demand? Actually, the president of Sri Lanka he came to Delhi recently. Uh, the Prime Minister of India he told the Sri Lankan president uh, implement the Thirteenth Amendment, uh, which is giving some powers to the provincial councils. He said okay, but in Sri Lanka everything is going against the Thirteenth Amendment implementation of the Thirteenth Amendment. There is no provincial council elections for the last five years. We are demanding the government to uh, have the provincial council elections. If the provincial council elections held only, at least they can discuss with the government. They can ask the government to implement. Uh, specifically, the, even the present government, they are not willing to the powers, whatever it may be, for, for example, the police powers, the land powers. They don't want to devolve. They, even they don't want to decentralize those powers. They don't want to give it to the people. Specifically because they strongly feel if those powers are given, can, country will divide. This sort of thinking, I am I, I, not saying this is the correct thinking, but those thinkings are there. Not only that, the singular Buddhist hardliners, they don't want to give those powers to the Tamil people. So this is also happening. Now the singular Buddhist elements, they are going against it. They are, you know, there is so much of uh, agitation against, against these things. This is what's happening in Colombo. Even they want to settle down 25% Sinhalese in the northern province. Because under the northern province, 95% Tamils. If they settle down 25% Sinhalese only, they strongly feel there will be, in the future, there won't be any cry for a separate state again. So they won't do, uh, settle down singular people so that the, the demographic pattern can be changed and that the Tamil people will not start again for a st separate state cry. This sort of thinking is with the government and they are not in a position to uh, devolve the powers or they are not in a position to uh, have a proper resolution to these problems. And uh, given the current situation, which actually you explained, what kind of uh, help do you expect from India? India India is a large country. India is next to Sri Lanka. We are only 20, 23 kilometers away from here. In that situation, if they politically uh, strengthen the Tamil people only, the Tamil people can uh, survive in that country. That is one point. Not only that, 
in now even the chinese involvement in sri lanka if the tamil people are politically strengthened and they will be in a position uh, to resist whatever happening maybe you know whatever foreigners if they come into the northeast they can resist that so, so to that extent tamils need the political powers so i think india is the only country they can do that they can uh, they can pressurize the sri lankan government they can pressurize the sri lankan government at least to implement the 13th amendment not only that even give more powers uh, to the provincial council so that at least the indian security can be guaranteed so, so I, I, those are the things actually we are mainly expecting from the indian government Uh, from what you just said what is your uh, view what is your opinion on uh, china's uh, a, you know involvement in uh, uh, sri lankan economy china in uh, china's involvement is already there because they already have the you know hamandota half of 99 years lease with 15000 acres of land and there is a port city the port city was built by chinese and in another 40 years they are going to administrate that port city so the chinese are already there so the you cannot or nobody cannot you know send them away so they are there so i, I do we do not know actually what sort of uh, uh, actions the government of india will take in the future on these matters of course they are, they may be having their own foreign policy to handle these matters but we strongly feel that you know if we allow those things into the northeast Uh, definitely uh, indian security as far as the indian security is concerned uh, you know if they if we allow them into the northeast that will be a very 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 difficult for not only the tamils even to the indians also subscribe to the federal's youtube page for more news and updates